You'll be moving to our branch office starting tomorrow. Is this a demotion? No, the branch just needs more hands. It's strange to have a transfer so suddenly after just yesterday. Did someone hire up say something? Jason. The boss's face hardened as he was pressed further. You should be grateful it's just a demotion and not something worse. I haven't done anything wrong. The boss just put his hands on his head, looking exasperated. Yes, you haven't done anything wrong, but sometimes the situation and the people involved are just too tricky. Not everything that's just is always right. If you're in the corporate world, you should understand that. I don't want to understand that. Without hesitation, I responded. The boss sighed deeply. I may not agree with what you're saying, but I'll accept the decision quietly. And just like that, the demotion was decided. According to the boss, the reason for the demotion was my inability to gauge situations and people, but I couldn't see it that way. The incident happened just yesterday. While walking through the train station as usual, I noticed an old man deliberately bumping into women. He's what you'd call a bump into guy. What's up with that guy? Doing it on purpose. That's dangerous. Seeing women lose their balance and fall because of him was more than uncomfortable. As I was about to approach the old man, he seemed to sense something and quickly disappeared into the crowd. Arriving at the office, Still irate, there was an unusual tension in the air. Rumor had it that some bigwig was visiting the office for an inspection. Apparently, the results of the inspection cut effect bonuses and evaluations, so the higher-ups were bustling around making sure everything was in order. Turns out, that bigwig was none other than the old man from the station. Wait, that's the guy who was causing trouble. Can't be serious. Seeing that arrogant executive instantly reminded him of the morning's annoyance, and before he could think, he addressed him. Excuse me, I have a question. Um, what is it? Why did you keep bumping into women at the station this morning? The executive's face tensed visibly. I saw you this morning. You were purposely walking into them. Some even fell. Were you aware? What was your intention? Did you want to touch them? Or were you just irritated by them? Either way, attacking innocent women isn't good. What's your take on that? Taken aback by the barrage of questions, the executive could only open and close his mouth in silence. Hey, Jason. The boss, witnessing this, hurriedly interjected. The executive's face grew redder by the second. Are you his supervisor? Let's talk in private. Y yes With a face as fierce as a thundercloud, the executive didn't respond to my claims but instead took the boss to a meeting room. And today, I subsequently got demoted. The big shots were mad and my boss was beside himself, but I still believe I didn't say anything wrong. Things like this have happened a few times before. Regardless of someone's status or position, there's nothing wrong in pointing out when something's bad. Whenever something like this happened, Close friends who know me well would occasionally warn me, but I've always believed that being truthful is the right way. I appreciate those friends who care for me and stand by me no matter what trouble I get into, but I just couldn't heed those warnings. Back when I was a kid, I'd get scolded by teachers and parents for lying. Now that I'm an adult, I get reprimanded for being honest. Seems unfair, doesn't it? Upon arriving at my new place of work, the sales office, the entire staff warmly greeted me. This was an office in a rural town, so remote they jokingly referred to it as the outpost a real backwater. It was just the manager, a sales guy named Peter, and a secretary named Emily, just the three of them. There weren't many customers coming in, but they were well staffed for their needs. There's no chance of improving performance here, and they even cut back on my allowances reducing my pay. It felt like a typical demotion. I hope we can work well together. It seems pretty laid back here. When I greeted the three of them, all momentarily looked shocked. You sure are straightforward. Let's keep busy together, Jason. That sounds good. 
Yeah, yeah. With that spirit, let's all do our best. The manager looked like a jolly old fellow, and while Peter had the typical playboy look, he seemed like a good guy. Jason, I'll usher you to your desk. After the greetings, Emily stood up with a cane in her left hand. Wait, why the cane? In response to my question, Emily tapped her right leg. I had a severe accident a few years back. I've needed this ever since. She proceeded through the office, skillfully using her cane. This desk is yours. The restroom's over there. Watching her maneuver effortlessly between desks and shelves was quite impressive. As I continued to stare, she seemed to become self-conscious, trying to hide her cane. Please don't stare. I know I'm a bit odd. No. I didn't think you were old. I was just impressed by how well you handle the cane. It's cool. Cool. I'm pretty clumsy, so I'd probably struggle to walk with it. You must have practiced a lot. Honestly, I admire you. Even if you're just being polite, it's nice to hear. I genuinely mean it. Thank you. Emily's smile was as radiant as a blooming flower. A few weeks later, I began learning the ropes from Peter. Watching him work, it was clear he was no slouch. In fact, he seemed very competent, making me wonder why he was even stationed here. I don't really get along with higher-ups. Peter said, pulling at his light brown hair. His hair is slightly long at the nape. His ears, peeking from behind his hair, have multiple piercings. While I believe appearance shouldn't matter as long as one isn't unkempt, it's true that authority figures often frown upon such looks. I can see that. That's harsh, Jason. Despite my comment, Peter laughed cheerfully. I'm good here, though. Everyone's nice, and it's fun working with them. I definitely think the folks here are more grounded than the ones at the main office. They might lack a bit of ambition, though. Haga true. A few weeks have passed since I was transferred here, and there's something that's been on my mind. It's about this guy, Peter, and a lady named Emily. They say they are just colleagues, but it's clear they are aware of each other in a different way. You can tell just by watching. I bet even the manager has noticed. If they have feelings for each other, all they have to do is express them. Wondering why they're hesitating. When I asked Peter about his feelings for Emily, he smiled awkwardly and froed his brows. She's a great help, always. She's sincere and a good person. What about romantically? Do you like her? I do like her, but I can't make a move. I feel guilty somehow. Why's that? I don't get it. What do you feel guilty about? Because of her leg issue, I feel bad for being able to walk normally. It seems Emily also feels a bit awkward for some reason. But I couldn't understand what Peter said at all. Despite all that, I like this branch. Though I was transferred as a kind of demotion, I have no intention of going back to the main office. In fact, I'd love to grow this place even more. Not only are the people nice, but they're also competent. So, Leveraging my sales skills and connections I've built over the years, I teamed up with Peter and we put in our best efforts. There were times when it felt too tough, but we kept pushing and pushing. Finally, it seemed our hard work was about to pay off. We were on the verge of closing a major deal. The CEO and vice president of the prospective client were visiting our office for a meeting. Both the manager and Emily were watching discreetly from a distance and seemed a bit nervous, but so far, the vibes were positive. Let's call it a day for now. Considering our future long-term relationship, how about dinner? At the end of the meeting, this proposal came from the client, and Peter and I exchanged glances. That sounds great. I know a fantastic diner. Looking forward to it. This diner is where Peter and I had dined before. The food, the ambience, the attitude of the hostess, everything was top-notch. When I mentioned that I liked this diner, Peter responded with, If you say so, the diner is guaranteed. 
By now, he's got a good read on my character. We left the office and headed to the diner as a group of four. The conversations flowed as smoothly as during the meeting, and after some drinks, both the CEO and vice president seemed in high spirits. So far, I think we've handled everything perfectly. We're pretty much guaranteed to clinch this deal. All we need to do now is wrap up the evening without any issues. That's when it happened. But isn't there an issue with your secretary? Things had been going well, but that one comment left both me and Peter speechless. Regardless, the CEO carried on in the same friendly tone. She might be somewhat cute now, but that's just because she's young. Women age quickly and just become regular old ladies. On top of not being attractive, having a disability in one leg must be a burden. If she were the only female employee, you'd think they'd hire another one to brighten up the place. The vice president nodded in agreement. Yeah, I was taken aback when she walked in with that cane. Indeed. Hearing their mocking laughter, my patience reached its limit. As I was about to reflexively stand up, Peter beat me to it. You've sure had a lot to say, thinking we'd just sit and listen, hadn't you? His voice, low and filled with icy anger, echoed through the room. It's hard to believe that kind of intensity comes from Peter, always smiling so goofily. Both the CEO and the vice president are staring in shock. You're saying our secretary is dead weight, well, you gotta be kidding me. She's way more admirable than jerks like you who belittle others just because they're a tad different or look down on women. She doesn't say hurtful things without knowing someone's struggles. Shame on you, you old fools. He's probably not used to speaking out like this. Having read it all at once, he seemed out of breath. Peter glared at the CEO and vice president, breathing heavily. Of course, I didn't stop him. What's gotten into you? That's rude to the CEO. Watching Peter suddenly transform and the vice president stammering in surprise was so amusing, I almost burst into laughter. Just because this is a social occasion doesn't mean you can look down on someone from another company. If anything, you guys are the rude ones here. What did you say? Not only Peter, but I joined in comforting them, making the two of them red with anger. What's wrong with these guys? I've had enough. Let's go. Yes, sir. Fuming, they stormed out of the restaurant, their footsteps echoing. The moment the sliding door closed behind them, silence fell upon the private dining room. Peter let out a big sigh and slumped down. Oh man, I shouldn't have done that, especially during a business meeting. The manager had told me he's rooting for me. He must have realized the gravity of the situation and was scared. Seeing him all dejected, I quietly handed him my cell phone. The call was connected to our branch office. Jason, what's going on? Just talk to them. Timidly, Peter put the phone to his ear. Hello, you did great, Peter. I could hear the manager's voice from the other end, loud and clear. Seeing Peter's puzzled face, I potted him reassuringly on the shoulder. I've actually been on the line the whole time. Probably since they started with their insults, I immediately thought we couldn't deal with people like that. I connected the call so the manager could hear them, just to make sure they weren't lying. So, he heard everything I said. I heard every word, Peter. You did the right thing. Good job. The manager's voice is ringing out, tinged with excitement. That's right, Peter. Thank you so much. I'm over the moon. Emily, in a moment, Peter's eyes glistened when he heard Emily's voice, just as joyous as the manager's. Words of praise for me and Peter still echoed from the other end of the phone. As Peter was trying to hold back tears and respond, I gave him a fist bump. He returned it with a tearful smile. A victory fist bump. Working with a CEO like that, there probably would have been issues down the line anyway. It's good we got to know about them early on but I'd really appreciate it if you could secure a similar contract soon. Keep up the good work. The manager said this with his usual laid back tone. Typical of the manager to make such a tall order. The deal might have fallen through and sales are as tough as ever, 
but there was a silver lining. Peter and Emily started dating. It seems that dust settled between them after they took a stand that day. Honesty really is the best policy. Thank you for connecting the call back then. Thanks to you, Jason. Both of us could take the next step. Emily, smiling, looked as radiant as ever. Congratulations. Make a great couple. Thank you. Don't worry about me getting my heart broken. Yes. Wait, what? Sorry, Peter. You'll have to forgive a comment like that. I'm just bad at keeping secrets. Well, time to move on and maybe find a new romance.